So welcome on to a presentation on calculating returns. Now, regardless of what you invest in, you should be able to calculate your return or whatever the return is. Now, what is a return? It is simply a way of saying the profit. It's a measure of profitability. And there are three ways to do that. First of all, the absolute dollar or whatever currency, whatever that amount is, that's a, that's a called a return. Secondly, that dollar return as a percentage of the initial amount invested. And thirdly, an annualized percentage of that amount invested. Now in finance, we tend to use the third measure, but we will also use the first and the second. So it, you need to be clear about which uh, is being used, particularly the, the difference between part, uh, number two and number three. So as an example, let's say you bought a collectible item as an investment two years ago. Now at that time you paid $200 for the item. Last week you sold it for $242. So let's take a look. What is the return on that investment? First of all, as an absolute return, secondly, as a percentage, and thirdly, as an annualized percentage return. Now the absolute return is just how much you made in dollars. So that's the difference between what you sold it for and what you initially bought it for. So that's 242 minus $200, and that's $42. Now the percentage return, if you recall, that would be the absolute return, the amount of dollars you earned, divided by your initial investment. So that would be the 42 divided by the 200. So that's 21%. Now the annualized return, as you can see, you paid for the investment two years ago. So that would be 21% divided by two years. So that means each year 10.5%. So that's 10.5% per year. Now that's based on the initial amount. Now there's also a way of calculating on a compound basis, and that would turn out to be 10% per year at compounded annually. I'll leave it to another point in time or another presentation actually to calculate the compounded returns. Now we're going to talk about the two sources of return. Um, in the calculation, I'm going to show the percentage return, but also the absolute. Now, let's assume you bought a share for $150 and then sold or sold the share a year later for $168 after receiving a dividend of $6. As you can see, there are two sources of making the money. Now, one of them is called capital gains and the other one is called dividends. For that's the case in uh, with shares, you will find uh, these two sources of return for all kinds of investments. But basically the capital gains is the difference in uh, price that you bought and you sold an item, an, an investment. So here we have the capital gains, which are simply the $18. That's the, that's the difference between the uh, 168 and the 150 dollars we have here so that's the 18 dollars and the return there is 12 percent because it's the 18 dollars profit divided by how much you uh, you invested of 150. now the the dividends um are uh, are there the six dollars so we can calculate that six divided by 150 so the return is four percent so now the total return and that's the source these two sources the total return is going to be 12 plus 4 percent so that's 16 percent so as we see there are two potential sources uh, for the return one is, and this is going to be true of all types of investments so for shares for bonds for real estate for art for collectibles commodities etc uh, the first one is the change in price once the investment is sold. So that's the difference between the selling price and the, uh, and the purchase price. That would be the capital gains, which of course can be capital losses if you sell for a lower price than you buy. Um, the second one would be the ongoing cash flow returns. Those are uh, called various things such as dividends for shares, like in the example we just did, or a coupon for bonds or a net income for various other types of investments. And um, as you can see, 
the total return is simply the total of these two. Now, uh, the, again, it would have to also be the annualized total if you're doing it on an annualized basis. One thing should be noted, depending on the kind of investment, you may not have an ongoing cash flow return. So if you're buying art or some type of collectible, in most cases, you won't be earning uh, some annual cash flow from it. You're just you're buying it, you're going to appreciate it. But then when it, you are going to realize your capital gains or losses, and that will be your total return once you sell. So that's it for this short presentation on uh, calculating returns. Thank you for your attention.